Hello, my name is Matthew Wittall, and thank you for coming to my talk. I'm here representing NASA's Granular Mechanics and Regolith Operations Laboratory, or GMRO Lab, and presenting work on high-velocity dust generated by lander plumes. Previous work investigated the behavior of high-velocity impact ejecta generated by impacts, considering multi-body dynamics. This work showed that a non-negligible amount of this high-velocity ejecta could remain in orbit for up to 20 days on average, and in some cases up to 10 years. This raised concerns about high-velocity dust generated by lander plumes, which have been simulated and seen to leave the impingement point at extremely high velocities near or above lunar escape velocity of about 2.3 kilometers per second. Recent follow-on work has simulated the behavior of this dust, which had initial conditions constrained based on observations and simulations by Lane and Metzger. This work refined previous simulations by including estimations of charged environment around the moon based on data from the Artemis and other spacecraft. Details of these assumptions can be seen here. This work found that a negligible amount of this high-speed dust that's generated from the impingement point remained in orbit after 6.5 to 7 days. And this period was chosen because of the gateway's orbit in the NRHO, or near rectilinear halo orbit. There were some initial concerns that this high-velocity dust could linger in the lunar environment for a long period of time and end up sandblasting the gateway when it passed at Paralune. However, as of now, there is no evidence to support that hypothesis. However, this research did find that the potential hazard from re-impacting dust and debris was worth further investigation, with an expected distribution of the frequency of re-impacting debris as a function of distance from the landing site following a power law. This expected frequency from re-impacting dust is a function of overall lander mass based on estimations by Metzger. This estimation considers total ejected mass, particle size distribution, and total mass ejected above a certain given velocity. The results of the study can be seen here, and I'd like to emphasize that anything below 10 micrometers is pretty much carried away by the solar wind, and only a very small amount remains in orbit. Finally, recent work has examined the impact a landing on the South Pole could cause to Apollo 11 and other heritage sites. Previous work done by NASA has estimated that a safe landing distance for the Apollo landing site was about two kilometers away. That was based off of the lunar horizon, which is about 2.6 kilometers, and just kind of rounded off, assuming that if it's above the uh, beyond the horizon, it won't have a significant impact onto the Apollo 11 landing site. And there is no landing site on the moon that will completely eliminate the threat of re-impacting dust on the Apollo 11 or other Apollo heritage landing sites. However, because of the constraints of the initial conditions, most of that debris isn't going to impact the Apollo 11 site, assuming a landing spot uh, somewhere near the south pole of the moon. The vast majority of it is either going to escape into interplanetary space or re-impact somewhere near the south pole landing site. It is clear that the re-impacting dust near the landing site might be considerable. Thus, there is significant interest in the construction and deployment of a lunar landing pad. Thank you for your time, and I'd be happy to take any questions you might have.